Hello and welcome to your next tutorial in JavaScript. And today we're going to be discussing methods for arrays and the image object and also preloading pre images, which is pretty much the same topic. So let's get started. So as you can see here, I already created a, a an array called books and I created four elements and basically they're just different genres of books. So let's see what happens if we try writing this or first let's figure out how to write this so all you have to do in the document.write is just type in the name of the array no brackets or parentheses or anything fancy so when you refresh the page uh, it then shows you a list of all the different elements with a comma in between obviously there's no comma there that's because this is one element uh, so it looks kinda of funky but yeah so what if we wanted to change what goes in between each element when it prints it? Well, what you can do is use the join method. So you just type in join, afterwards dot join, and then within the parentheses, type in a string literal that you would like. So the default is just the comma. Let's add in a space so it looks more nice. So when I refresh the page, well, now we have a space, so now it looks well more like a sentence or a statement. Uh, and you can put in whatever you want, a plus sign, if you want to make it look like you're adding a bunch of strings. So yeah, and that's how you change what goes in between when you're, you know, listing what the elements of your array are. Uh, the next one I would like to show you is the shift. So allow me to write that first. And now, what the shift does is it removes and returns the first element of an array. So allow me to just write it like this because I'd like to show you the effects of this and I'll type in books here. So I'll click save and oh I'll probably want to add in a break tag. I should probably add in a break tag so it's more clear so they're separate. So when I refresh the page uh, allow me to show this to you. So what the shift does is it removes the first and returns it. So not only is it only showing you the first one, because that's all it's returning, that's all it returns, but it permanently rem removed it from the rest of the array. So if you type in just the array, fantasy wasn't part of it. Now, the opposite of the shift is the pop. So if I just type in pop here, instead, it will now remove and return just the first, excuse me, the last. So science fiction was the last, so it returned that, and then if I print just the books array, all that's left are the first three. The last one was then removed, which was the science fiction. Alright, the next one I'd like to show you is the unshift. Mm -hmm. Now, if you just type in unshift like this, what that will show you is, I'll actually show it to you like this, is it'll show you that there's only four elements in here and well, what the unshift does is it's well I should probably tell you what it does first it adds an element to the beginning of an array and we're not adding anything but but even if we were adding anything if you just type in unshift it'll just show you how many elements from the array so you don't want to do it like this so first let's create a variable I'll call it x is equal to whatever the user types in I love the prompt box it really makes things you know, because the prompt box is what you'll use a lot, or in for input validation. That's when you're using forms, which I think will be the next tutorial. I'm not quite too sure. But yeah, uh, taking in information from the user is always the best thing you can do. So we don't want to write. We don't. We want to write how many elements there are. So we'll just have it say books dot unshift, and then we can see what the array looks like afterwards. So we'll print it afterwards. So, I'll just type in my name, and, oh, oh, I didn't type in, I'm sorry. And then within the parentheses, you have to type in the variable that holds the string that you want to add on that string. So, I'll type in my name again, and there it is, Adam, which was now added to the beginning. And the opposite of unshift is not shift, I already showed that to you before. Uh, the opposite, opposite of this is the push. So then it should just add Adam to the end. And now Adam's at the end. And again, if you print, if you're to do, if you're to do uh, document.write 
books.push. Uh, that would just tell you how many elements, which again would be five. One, two, three, four, and five. Before, when it was showing four, that was because I didn't do this yet, so there was no fifth element added in yet. And yeah, that's, that's just about it. Uh, I'm now going to get rid of this. And the next one I'd like to show you is the reverse. And what the reverse does is basically it will print them in the reverse order. So I do this. Oh, now I have to take that parameter out. And now it's in the opposite order. So science fiction followed by adventure, epic, and fantasy, as you can see here. Another one, and this will probably be the last one I show you, is the sort. And what that does is it alphabetizes it. So I refresh the page, now adventures at the beginning, followed by epic, fantasy, and science fiction. Another, and yeah, you can also combine these. So let's say you want it in alphabetized, but backwards, so from Z to A instead of A to Z. Well, you can sort them first like this, then you can type in books.reverse. So it'll sort them first before it reverses them. So if you refresh the page, now science fiction is first, followed by fantasy, epic, and advan adventure. So now it's alphabetized backwards. So that's pretty cool. And yeah, that's really pretty much it. So the next thing I'm going to show you guys is the image object. So, uh, believe it or not, let's go into the header tag and create an image tag first before we do anything with this. So, uh, the source for this will be... Yep, and don't worry, I have other pictures too, so it's alright. The name of it will be, I don't know, let's call it My Picture, just because. Uh, the title is just the tooltip that appears when your mouse hovers over it, and uh, I keep doing that. And then the alternate name, in case it doesn't appear, again, will be Smiley. I should put the extension on there, because usually they have the extension on there. So I click Save, and I'll refresh the page, and there's our Smiley. Um, so yeah, there it is. I uh, haven't seen that guy in a while. So the image object is pretty interesting. You don't have to actually create it as much as you have to refer to it. It's already instantiating these objects for you. So all you have to do is refer to them. Now the image, and in the next video, I believe the next video will be on forms and input validation. Uh, both forms and images are part of the document object model. So in order to refer to this, and yes, there will be a video further down the series completely on the document object model, so you don't have to worry about it too much. But in order to refer to these things, you have to type in document first, followed by dot, and then you type in images, and that's, that's pretty much it. Um, every time you create an Im image or you have an image on here, the, uh, the browser will automatically create a new element for you inside the image object. So the very first one you create will be element number zero. The second one that appears will be one, and then the third will be two, and so on and so forth. Whatever number it is, it'll be that number minus one inside uh, for the element number inside the image object, or the image array. Well, we're not really working with arrays yet. You'll see in a moment. Uh, so yeah, let's check out some properties. So one property of this is the actual source. And because it's a property, no parentheses afterwards. So let's actually create an alert box so we can see what it would appear. And yes, yeah, so you can do document.write. So you can do a doc you can have a document object within a document object. But I like alert boxes. Uh, so I'll refresh the page and there's the URL for where it is, which is on my computer. Uh, other ones could be like the height. So you could return the height in pixels so it's 200 pixels. As you could have guessed, you could do width. Uh, I won't show you that, it's too obvious. And another one is the name. This is pretty interesting because it will return whatever you assign the name as. So it should say my picture. And it does. So that's pretty cool. So now let's discuss preloading images. Now the point of preloading images on your web browser is to basically instantiate them inside your image object uh, before 
to make sure that they're there before they're ever needed. It's very important, and usually you'll do this in your header file, but uh, I don't, I'm too lazy to create script tags right now. I should have had them ahead of time. That's my bad. So I'm going to get rid of all of this, and next, we'll create a variable, and I'll call it my pictures, and I'll set that equal to uh, a new array, so that we're going to be creating a new array here. I'm just going to copy this for time saving sake. So I'll type that in, print that there, and when you access the first element, so this isn't, um, you're actually going to be assigning an image to this space, because this is separate. You're not doing images, what we were doing before, images bracket zero end bracket. The first image that you create will still become images open bracket zero close bracket but this is going to be a different array that we're creating this is a different array so you could still access them with the other with the image object but we're going to be creating an array instead for referring to these it's it'll make sense in a moment so we're so again we'll be accessing the image object but in a different manner so oh geez me and my spelling so it looks like the same. So you have to create a new array, and then you have to refer to the My Pictures array that you created, followed by the element number and new image. Then below it, you do the very same thing almost, except you end it with dot source, and then it's going to be equal to wherever it is. So because it's in the same folder, as you might have remembered from XHTML, you have to type in the URL of where the image is. Since my smiley uh, picture is in the very same folder as my index file I don't have to put down a URL so I click save and now anytime you refer to this right here you'll be referring to this picture so if I refresh the page it, this should disappear but that's to be expected so you can create an alert box here and what you can do is for example is type in my pictures uh, the first element which is zero dot source this would just be an example and when I refresh the page now we get the URL for where the image is and this just goes to show you that look I did the image tag is gone it's not there anymore I refer to this image by creating an array inside the image object so now I can refer to these images and this is the picture now I can't make the image appear without creating an image tag within the body tags of my HTML document but the point of preloading images is for certain things like if you're doing picture animation like maybe an, uh, a picture that's scrolling across the page or if you have a picture animation where it changes like maybe if you hover over it with, an, with a, uh, a mouse over event which is an event handler that we went through in a previous video any kind of animation really or if you're going to be affecting the image you want to preload them this way then in the JavaScript when you're using events and you're creating functions for affecting these files you'll refer to each of the images by their uh, index number or element number and I will have a project video I kid you not as of this moment if you're watching this video I should have a uh, a, a tutorial for working with both picture animation and uh, image, uh, image movement and whatnot those might be separate projects because that can be quite a bit of stuff but I'll definitely have a project video and I will explain this again in that as I'm making it and it will make perfect sense uh, so I hope this video was informative and I'll see you in the next one